The Vedia Peruviana and Nerium Oleander, Sin. Caneru, Tam. Alari, Angle. Oleander, are two common plants grown in Sri Lanka. The Vedia Peruviana, Yellow Oleander, is the commonest plant poison in Sri Lanka as young adults consume the fruits to commit suicide. Yellow oleander has trumpet-shaped yellow flowers. Its green fruit is broadly triangular or ovate with a raised ridge round the middle, which when matured, is glossy black and wrinkled. The fruits are highly toxic due to the presence of several cardiac toxins, including the vetia A, B and nerifalin. Other parts of the plants are also poisonous. Nerium oleander has pink, deep red or white flowers. All parts of the plant, leaves, flowers, stems and the woody trunk, are poisonous, due to the presence of several cardiac toxins. It is not advisable to grow yellow oleander in home gardens when there are young children. Clinical features The clinical features of both types of oleander poisoning are similar. Ingestion Chewing the leaves produces a burning sensation of mouth. Ingestion of the fruit causes nausea and vomiting early, due to the local irritant effect of the stomach. There can be abdominal pain, tenderness, diarrhea and restlessness. Vomiting 6 to 12 hours after ingestion implies significant absorption of the toxin. The main life-threatening clinical manifestation is cardiotoxicity causes bradycardia. Varying degrees of heart block and hypotension. Hyperkalamia often occurs, secondary to inhibition of the Na KAT pace pump. There may be atrial and ventricular ectopics and other ventricular arrhythmias. Other toxic effects are yellow vision, xanthopsia, anxiety, convulsions and coma management. Even an asymptomatic patient should be observed in a hospital for 24 hours. Consider gastric lavage when appropriate, see page 4. Consider whole bowel irrigation and repeated doses of activated charcoal, MDAC. The value of MDAC is controversial. Monitor pulse, blood pressure and respiration. If facilities are available, continuous cardiac monitoring is indicated. Otherwise, obtain frequent ECGs. Maintain a fluid balance chart and replace fluids lost. Check serum electrolytes 4 hourly and correct any imbalance. If serum potassium is below 3 MEQ, L, 500 ml of Hartman solution should be infused over 4 hours. Serum potassium levels greater than, 5.5 MEQ, L is seen with acute toxicity and is an indication for treatment with anti digoxin antibodies, if available. The decision whether to give canarutab will depend on the level of risk. This decision should be taken on an individual basis, by the physician, cardiologist. Level 1 would be a definite indication for canarutab. Canarutab should be considered in level 2. Level 3 patients could be kept under observation and reviewed every 2 hours. If convulsions are present give diazepam 5 to 10 mg IV, pediatric dose, 0.2 mg per kilogram. Repeat if necessary. If severe bradycardia, pulse rate less than 40 BPM, or second degree AV block occurs, atropine bolus, 0.5 to 2 mg intravenously, or infusion, 10 vials in 500 ml 0.9% of sodium chloride titrated to maintain heart rate between 60 and 90 BPM. Tachycardia should be avoided. The atropine infusion should be stopped if the patient develops features of atropine toxicity, restlessness, confusion, blurred vision, tachycardia, hypertension or respiratory depression. Dosage and administration of canarutab Canarutab is provided in vials of 40 mg. The recommended dose is 800 mg, 20 vials, irrespective of age, sex or body weight. Contraindications are known allergy to canarutab or ovine products and pregnancy. However in situations where the mother's life is at risk, canarutab may be used. 800 mg of canarutab is dissolved in 100 ml of 0.9% sodium chloride, given by IV infusion over 20 minutes. Side effects are uncommon, and a test dose is not required. 
Urticarial reactions and bronchospasm should be watched for, but prophylactic adrenaline or hydrocortisone is not required. In case of reactions, the infusion should be stopped, and managed as if the patient has had an anaphylactic reaction. Stratification of risk of developing life-threatening cardiac toxicity based on clinical features, ECG rhythm and serum potassium. 